and they wound up at a uh, resort called Treasure Island, where there was a big NFL party. And at a table, Jimmy was at the head and presiding. Much alcohol had been consumed. There, all this over a two-point yeah. conversion? <laughs> Hardly. All this because Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson abruptly left the owners' meetings and was notably absent from the morning coach's breakfast and photo. Johnson told the Dallas Morning News he was reassessing his future with the Cowboys following comments Jones made late Monday night suggesting he might fire his coach. The uh, night before, uh, on an off-the-record basis, uh, I basically, which is, which is something that I do quite often, tossed a lot of things around regarding the Cowboys, the league, the NFL, and uh, that was one of them, but that wasn't given any serious consideration on my part. What may have gotten Johnson's craw was that Jones even mentioned a possible successor, Barry Switzer, a rival from Jimmy's college days at Oklahoma State. Jerry's comments stemmed from an instance earlier Monday evening at an NFL function at Pleasure Island. I proposed a toast to about um, a group of five or six people, uh, five of which had uh, Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl rings, uh, to uh, kind of toast, job well done. Jimmy wouldn't participate, and everybody is just stunned by this, and it's a very awkward moment, and nobody will lift a glass because the guy at the head of the table, Jimmy Johnson, won't lift his glass. So Jerry tried again and reposed the toast, lifted his glass and took a swig. Nobody moved. And Jerry's face, uh, it was explained to me, turned about five shades of angry red, not embarrassed, but angry red, and he uttered a curse to the table, basically, screw all of you, wheeled and stormed out. Two hours after uh, the bad toast at the NFL function, I was with another colleague, Rick Goslin, and sat with Jerry in the hotel lobby bar for about three hours and listened to him rant about the kind of person he thought Jimmy had become, which was selfish, insecure, and Jerry really felt he had been betrayed. And Jerry's anger was very real. The two principals didn't talk Wednesday, but they did speak Tuesday, shortly before Johnson decided to leave. When I was with Jimmy, I stepped out of a meeting real quick. It wasn't a long meeting. Uh, he just basically said, I've heard some rumors, and I said, you're still the coach of the Cowboys. Uh, talked about the circumstances very briefly and went on, and I'm not that concerned about it. Did you get a feeling that he was concerned yesterday? Uh, basically, uh, initially, uh, because there had been a lot of rumors and a lot of innuendos, uh, certainly um, uh, to the extent that uh, he was concerned, uh, I certainly said to him that he certainly coached the Cowboys. After leaving the owners' meetings, Johnson went to his Miami yacht to assess the messy mix-up. He returned to Dallas a few days later, still seething at his cowboy boss. I don't accept that he was drunk and, and made comments because a few hours later he made the same derogatory comments to his uh, business associate, Mike McCoy. Uh, as far as this smokescreen that it was off the record, uh, off the record, I mean, does that mean that you don't have to tell the truth? Uh, does that mean that you're going to lie? Uh, and besides, off the record, uh, there were men and women around that were not reporters. Uh, and how did they take off the record? The reason I came to the Cowboys is I wanted to be able to control personnel. Uh, and so I did not change that uh, responsibility last summer. I read where uh, all of that has taken place. Uh, evidently, again, he must have said that off the record because it's, again, it's something that's not true. Next. Johnson and Jones bunker down to work out the impasse. I'm not going to resign without a job and without compensation. It's an unsafe condition, it's an unsafe situation. You don't know who he's bringing in, you don't know what this guy's like, you don't know if you don't know him before, you don't know if he got along with him, you don't know what system he's bringing in. Maybe he's a Chuck Knox, you know, ground Chuck. 100%. I'm sporting Jimmy, I don't care what the situation is. You know what I'm talking about. Jimmy fired me too. Our night begins with Pro Football's version the Hatfields and the McCoys. Yeah, all we need is Richard Dawson. We have the family feud going on in Big D tonight. As far as we know, Jimmy Johnson is still the coach of the Cowboys. That may change in the next 24 hours. A long meeting today between owner and coach will lead to a second meeting and maybe a divorce tomorrow. Pam Oliver on the Jimmy Jerry Watch at Valley Ranch. Now he's talking about firing me! <laughs>
It's the best little soap opera in Texas. The tongues around here are wagging. I still think Jerry Jones is being a total idiot. Jerry and Jimmy, owner and coach, enemies in what amounts to a bitter power struggle between men of huge egos fighting for control over the team they share. Jones and Johnson spent two and a half hours trying to work out their most serious and most public dispute to date. The two emerged with no definitive word about Johnson's future. It was a real uh, addressing of the past together, uh, every aspect of our relationship and how we've worked together in the past, uh, uh, positives as well as negatives. And kind of been uh, uh, candid about uh, our feelings over the last five years, and uh, nothing was resolved. And we're going to uh, get back tomorrow and, and talk about uh, where we go from here. This all started when Jones muttered something about firing Johnson after drinking the night away at the recent owners' meetings in Orlando. He even named former Oklahoma University coach Barry Switzer as a possible replacement. Jerry later backed off, but by then, Jimmy was steamed. I told him I would not resign. Uh, you know, I had an opportunity... Uh, to get another job. I'm not going to resign without a job and without compensation. No matter what spin Jones and Johnson try to put on this soap opera, their obvious disdain for each other is of growing concern to the players. Troy Aikman met with both men, but refrained from the role of mediator. We're talking about two very intelligent adults, and I think that they can uh, you know, solve their own problems. That's not, that's not my intention, is to try to save the the organization. An organization built by two determined men who seem determined to bring it down or each other in the process. In Dallas, Pam Oliver, ESPN. You know what surprises me? Given the already tense circumstances, very public nature of this, uh, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram reported Sunday, Jerry was quoted as saying, I have a mental list of replacements. You'd think that he'd pull back a little bit at this point. We'll wait and see what happens tomorrow and, of course, let you know here on Sports. Was that another one of those off-the-record? Yes. <laughs> the most provocative thing he said was he diminished what Jimmy had done in winning two Super Bowls for the Cowboys back-to-back -back by saying he thought 500 guys could coach the Cowboys and win the Super Bowl with the talent Jerry had assembled. Next on ESPN Classics, Sports Center flashback, it's doomsday in Dallas. Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones sever the cord. We've gone through a little transition here. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's a big transition. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about you, Cowboys? Yeah! How about them, Cowboys? I don't think we'll be hearing that line coming from Jimmy Johnson anytime soon, Mike. The team, the owner, the coach, the end. Off-the-record comments have brought about an on-the-record split. Tonight, Jerry Jones is searching for a new head coach. Jimmy Johnson is searching for a new job. Pam Oliver reports, boys will be boys, but not these boys. Jimmy Johnson's grimace after round two of meetings with Jerry Jones reflected the news to come. In order for them to go on from here, we, we have mutually decided that I would no longer be the head football coach with the Dallas Cowboys. This isn't something that has been just frivolously thought about. This isn't something that uh, we've, we've talked a couple of hours on. We have analyzed this from stem to stern. They say the feeling is mutual, that Johnson should move on. But Jimmy and Jerry insist it isn't bad blood that's driving them apart, or Jones's recent threat to fire Johnson, or even a case of egomania gone wild. There are no negatives when you really look at it. But we'd take all the positives of that and maybe take it on into something that in our judgment and in our instincts, we didn't think was going to be what's in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. That Jones and Johnson can say this is a positive thing is probably more than most people interested in or associated with the Cowboys can stomach. Many may see this as a shift in America's team about as subtle as a California earthquake. It was a positive thing in that, you know, we were able to open up with one another and go from here. And, and I truly believe this. I truly believe 
that the Dallas Cowboys will be a stronger organization and better because of that. And the move is also very good for Johnson. He's away from Jones, out of his contractual commitment to the organization, free to look elsewhere and removed from the pressure that comes with enormous success. Replacements? Well, Jones wouldn't say, although he does have what he considers a mental list of candidates. As for Jimmy, he says there are no regrets, just joy at the thought of getting out. We've gone through a little transition here. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's a big transition, but, but hey, the Dallas Cowboys will be right on top. Those were two of the best acting performances I've seen in a long time. You'd never know that these two were splitting from one another. He pulled the trigger on Jimmy when Jimmy, I think, least expected it. Because he's thinking, I'm the two-time Super Bowl coach, and I'm Jimmy Johnson. I own this town. I own pro football. I'm going to win another couple of Super Bowls. And he fires it. The big flashpoint with him was that Jimmy always thought Jerry wanted football, wanted football credit. Uh, that Jerry was trying to step beyond the normal role an owner of a franchise had into coaching. And Jimmy would never give him that satisfaction. Even if Jerry did deserve a little bit, Jimmy was providing not one iota. I think that Jerry Jones made a huge mistake in forcing Jimmy Johnson out of the organization. I accept most of the responsibility for that because I think it's my job uh, to uh, be more tolerant. Had Jimmy Johnson remained on board, I think the Dallas Cowboys would have done things that no other organization in football had ever done. Maybe that would have been three in a row or four out of five. It's unfortunate that it happened. Uh, rather than really look back and say, hey, who's, who's responsible and why did this have to happen, uh, I'm just fortunate and thankful for the fact that we were able to get two Super Bowls out of it before it ended. Let's play a little bit of what next, starting with Jimmy Johnson. Well, I think you look to Florida, the Miami Dolphins. Don Chula has one year left on his contract. That would certainly be the, the place where Jimmy Johnson would like to coach. Uh, they have a new owner, Wayne Huizenga. Let's see what happens a year down the road. He replaced Tom Landry in Dallas. Why not Don Shula in Miami? Next, Barry Switzer takes over, and Michael Irvin melts. Michael, can I get your second No! And you can't come in here because I'm getting you. Ah, champ, 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 ah. Stay out. All y'all, stay your asses out. Let's go out. I'm crazy like a little more, man. Hey, I'm playing with y'all this stuff. Hey, uh... Ah! You don't know him before. You don't know if he got along with him. You don't know what system he's bringing in. Maybe he's a Chuck Knox, you know, ground Chuck. You don't know. We don't know. A day after Johnson stepped down, it was the bootleggers board, Barry Switzer, who was hired, not ground Chuck, as in Chuck Knox. Nothing's going to change, Cowboy fans. Get ready to watch the Dallas Cowboys be the best in the NFL. we got a job to do, and we're going to do it, baby! The move wasn't received warmly by Cowboys players, judging from Michael Irvin's unwillingness to even address it. All y'all, stay your asses out. Let's go out. I'm bringing you up to a moment, let's go. Hey, the f***ing I'm playing with y'all this stuff. Hey, uh... Stay your asses back. Switzer led the Cowboys to a 12-4 record and to the NFC title game in his first season. A year later, the Cowboys became the first team in NFL history to win three Super Bowls in a four-year period. I want to tell you, we did it our way, baby! We did it! We did it! We did it! After spending two seasons as a television analyst, Johnson, the man who succeeded one legend in Tom Landry, would follow another icon, replacing Don Shula at Miami, where Johnson would get his wish, the coveted dual role of head coach and general manager of the Dolphins. Days before Christmas of 1998, when Johnson's mother passed away, it was Jerry Jones, of all people, who reached out to Jimmy in his time of sorrow. I'm down, uh, you know, with, with Daddy uh, at, at her funeral, and, uh, and, and Daddy talked about Jerry sending, you know, just loads and loads of food for all the people that were there, and, you know, just, you know, just, he was very thoughtful, and uh, I wrote him a note, I said, hey, you know, uh, People don't understand that, you know, hey, uh, you're a special guy, and, uh, and I appreciate that. From my perspective and family perspective, it was just the thing to do and uh, let him know and his family that we were thinking of. Our relationship does transcend over 30 years. The success that we enjoyed working together for five years 
and getting to go to those Super Bowls. Uh, that's very, very positive. And, and anything that could even approach being negative or sensitive like that is so overwhelmed by the good things that have happened since we've known each other. Hope you enjoyed this Sports Center flashback to the Jimmy and Jerry Show in their days in Big D. I'm Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching.